Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to do the front wheel alignment and you might remember from a previous uh, episode that we changed the rack and pinion and if you do so you will have to realign the front wheel steering and we're talking about the toe so I'm going to explain what toe in and toe out is and why you need it what the benefits are what are the disadvantages we we'll also will then look where to adjust it on the front wheels and then we actually will have two practical examples on how we're going to do this in practice. And I'm going to do this with some very, very simple means. Before we start to adjust the toe, it's important to understand what toe is. Sometimes it's referred to as tracking. And what I've shown you here is the top view of a car, the front wheels and the rear wheels. And of course, this is normally the driving direction. So if the front wheels are pointing both inwards, so like so, like so, trying to draw properly. Now I exaggerated with this one. This is what we call toe in. So this is toe in. If we adjust the wheels in the other direction, so they point actually outwards, like so, then we talk about toe out. And depending on what type of car you have, you will either have toe in or toe out. So now that we know what toe in and toe out is, uh, we can look a bit closer where it's been applied. Now, typically rear wheel driven cars, uh, they have a toe in in the front. And that is because the rear axle drives the car forward. It pushes the car forward. And because of the suspension setup and the, the behavior of the front wheels, they tend to open up while the car is being pushed forward. So that's why uh, you adjust that or you circumvent that or you kind of like eliminate this kind of behavior by putting some toe in. And that's typically expressed in millimeters or in an angle and you'll see that in a few minutes. Front wheel driven cars typically have a toe out. And that is because front wheel driven cars, the wheels are pulling the car forward and it has the tendency to bring in the wheels together. So we kind of compensate with that. I think we need to talk about a couple more things about toe in and toe out, um, specifically for the front wheels. So I made a little table so we can talk about a few of the phenomena or the effects that you get from toe in and toe out on the front wheels. So toe in on the front wheels actually improves the straight line driving. So straight line driving is um, something that you get uh, from toe in. Uh, so, and it creates more stability in a straight line because the left wheel pushes to the right and the right wheel pushes to the left. So it kind of keeps that car very nice in a straight line at high speed. Uh, so this is really good. If you were to apply it toe out, it would just be the opposite. You're going to have a very itchy kind of straight line driving. It's going to be hard uh, to keep a straight line. The smallest... Uh, bump in the road or the smallest amount of effect on the steering wheel you're going to get off the straight line so you have to keep constantly correcting it but toe out is a bit better for cornering um, so uh, it's not very good N not good uh, for straight line so that's why i think uh, it's good to have toe in uh, for straight line driving the other problem that we're having is that uh, because we have toe in or toe out uh, we're going to kind of heat up the tires. So we're going to have heat because the tire is kind of rubbing on an angle over the road. So, and it's valid for both, right? So we have that issue on both sides. So heat can be a good thing for your tires to keep them up to temperature on the racetrack. You want to have a lot of heat on the tires. So toe in or toe out will actually cause additional heat. And the last point that we have with, if you apply either toe in or toe out, is it's going to be wear, wear and tear. The more toe in you provide, the more wear you get on the tires. And the same thing is to, true for the uh, toe out. So you're going to have wear. The wear will be on different sides of uh, the tires. If you do toe in, you're going to have it on the outside. If you do toe out, you're going to have it on the inside of the tires. So that's the difference between the two. So as you can see now, it is important that you do align the front wheels in the way it's been designed by or specified by the constructor of the car. And of course, if you're on a track, you will adjust these factors 
depending on the track you're driving on. We know that toe-in isn't really all that good for cornering, uh, but it's great in the straight line. So if you're on a high-speed track, you want to have toe-in. And you might want to have quite a bit of that, just because you want to have the heat. And you don't really worry about the wear and tear at that moment in time. All right, so have said all that, uh, now we're going to do this on this specific car. And you need to check on your car um, what your angle is. You will find in the manual how much that angle will be. So it's either an angle or it's going to be expressed in millimeters. Um, and the millimeters uh, or thousands of an inch. And it will tell you the inner and the outer distance between the wheels, uh, no matter if it's toe in or toe out. And we'll do this on this car, and on this specific car, I have a, a millimeter difference of between 1.5 and 2.5 mil. So I'm going to go for 2 millimeters. That's what I'm going to use on this car. So um, let's have a look on how we're going to do this. So before you start to align your car, uh, you got to make sure that your rims are absolutely straight in the back. So if you have bent rims, don't use this method. And make sure that your rear axle has no toe-in or toe-out settings. In my case, I have a rear axle and my both rear wheels are fully parallel. But in your case, that might be different uh, if you do have toe-in and toe-out on your rear wheels because you have an independent suspension or no rear stiff axle, then this method may not apply. Rear cars that have no toe-in or toe-out, this is working just perfect. And to do this alignment, you're not going to need a lot of tools. All what you're going to need is a string, or if you want to go fancy, a laser base level and a flat ground. So the car has to be parked horizontally on the flat ground and not lifted. It has to rest on its wheels. The suspension should be in its normal position and a ruler. And that's basically all you're going to need. And let me show you now where we're going to adjust it because I can't show that to you while I'm doing it because the car is sitting on the ground and I need to get underneath. If you have a rack and pinion in the front of your car, then on both wheels you will find the pivoting point and the tie rod. And the tie rod has kind of an indent, so you need to put some pliers on there to rotate this left or right to move the wheel in or out. Make sure that you loosen up the gator clamp because otherwise you're going to twist the gator. And before you do so, you need to unlock this nut here, right? So you can turn the shaft left or right to move the wheel out. Uh, once you're done, then you tighten this back up. Now, in my case, uh, before I can show you that, I will actually have to remove the tie wrap here because I think it's holding the, the gator too, too tight to the rod. And of course, and once you're done, you shouldn't forget to put it back. All right. So now I should be able to allow the gator to move. Yeah, that's fine. So let me show you on how we can turn this. See how I can turn that. And depending the way I turn it, I'm going to have more or less toe in or toe out. It might be that your tie rod doesn't have this area, but then just use a plier on it. Uh, so if I turn this to the left or to the right, you'll see what happens here, the, the gap that we have here. So if I turn it uh, clockwise, let's say, I'm kind of creating more toe out. You can see the wheel moves outwards. So this is how you adjust it. Not very hard. So this is what I'm going to do when the car is flat on the ground. So now that we have the car on a level floor, we are about ready to start, but we want to make sure that the wheels are pointing straight forward and that we have the steering wheel in the right position. So put the steering wheel in the right direction. And in my case, this is how I want to have it. Now, of course, my wheels are still straight and you want to keep the steering wheel in the same position while you're actually doing the adjustments. As I said before, it's important to keep the steering wheel in the right position while you're doing the alignment. And while you do so, it might move. But I'm putting always a little bit of tape up on the steering wheel and the steering column so that I will see if it moves or not. This is not to prevent it from moving because that's not strong enough, but it will certainly show me if the steering wheel moved or not. 
So that is always good as a reference. All right, guys, so we're about ready to start uh, the alignment. Uh, but before we do so, I want to explain you on the board on how we're going to use that little string that I showed you, that yellow string. It could be any string, but make sure it's a very fine one. That's important. Or you can use the laser if you want. Uh, if you have a level with a laser on it, use that as well. It's the same principle. So on the top, I have a side view of the car. And it's important to know that we're going to pull the string through the center of the wheel hubs and then we tie it down to some kind of a support. It doesn't really matter what that support is as long as it is very, very solid. And it's important that it goes through the center of the wheel hubs because these are the points we're going to measure. Right? So keep that in mind. So this is going to be X, Y, Z, and K. These are just my points, huh? so you could call them whatever you want, but I'm using those as an example. If you look at the front of the top of the car, uh, then you would see that we have a fixing point here, we have a fixing point here, and between those we have actually pulled that string. Now it's important that we do position this, the, the string uh, position, which we call X, the position we call y, that the distance between the rim pointing towards the right, which is x, is the same distance as the distance from the rim in the front of the wheel here towards the string. So y must be equal to x. So if x and y are equal, then we know we have a perfect string going parallel towards the rear wheels. So this is our reference. So make sure that X and Y are equal. And you do this by moving around these uh, fixing points, right? So you can move this back and forth, left and right, uh, until you have the right distance. It doesn't matter how big X or Y is. If X is 20 or 30 or 40, it doesn't matter as long as Y is then the same value. So they must be equal. This is very important because that's your reference. Once you've done this, now we can start to align the front wheels. And we're going to adjust the tie rod, as I've shown you before, with this nut there and this, uh, by turning it left or right, in such a way that we create toe in, in this case. So I want to have some toe in, like so. Right, this is what I want this wheel to do. And I know my toe in, in my case, is 1.5 to 2.5 millimeters and I decided to go for 2 millimeters. That's what I decided. So if I was to measure this point here, which is my point Z and my point K, then I know that my point K equals to Z plus 2 millimeters. And that's what I need to adjust. So very simple. Uh, let's take an example. Uh, if my Z was um, 10 and my K was 12, then I have 2 millimeters of toe in. Now you can use whatever you want. I'm just giving the example of millimeters, but it could be thousands of an inch. But this is working very well, and I've done this already so many times on my cars, and actually I took them to an alignment center and just to have a double checked once and it was spot on. This works very well. But keep in mind, you need to make sure that this area is 100% correct. Y equals X, that's very important. That you have a rim which is not damaged, which is not bent because then it won't work. All right, so let's set it up. All right, so this is going to be my first fixing point. And again, you can use whatever you want for this. Um, so now I can start connecting up the string on this side and I put the second one up on the other side. All right. So now I want to have it through the center of the wheel hub. So we need to lower that down a bit. Let's see, a little bit more. A 
That looks about right by now. Okay, that will do. So I have the strain at the right height, both at the front and the rear wheels. So now we need to make sure that everything lines up on the rear wheel. So now let's measure the distance Y and X. So from the rim to the rope. And this is 19.3. And let's check it on the other side. And again, uh, you have to do this very accurate. This is 19. And this was 19.3. So I need to move this in a little bit. So this is the last check on both sides. I have now 191. So let's measure what we have in the front rim and see. So this is roughly about 19.7. And this is 207. So that's quite a bit. So we need to adjust this. I have way too much um, toe in here. So uh, let me go and adjust it and then we'll see. And you've seen on how I'm turning this uh, before, so it's still the same method I'm using. So let's check it out. So now I have here 20. And here I have 23. So this is three millimeter toe in. Um, it's still too much, so I'm gonna give it a few more turns. Okay. 20 and a little bit, half a mil and 22. So I'm happy with this. So this is the right setting for me. Now we are done on this side of the car and now I will need to do the other side. You might have seen that this is not very difficult. It's a bit of crawling back and forth and in between checking the steering wheel that it's still in the right position that it didn't turn. Uh, you could do this uh, on both sides at the same time actually. So if you have like four of those supports or something else and you have a rope on the other side as well, then you can do that very easily and double check it without having to come back and forth. I just have done one side now to show you. Normally I would put the rope up on the other side as well and, and then I can go back and forth and check because that's something you might want to do because things always turn a little bit. All right, now let me show you on how you do it with a level. If you want to use a laser level, then, then you can. That's not an issue. However, um, you will have to make it uh, fit properly onto the rear rim. And, you know, the rims may not always be exactly uh, level with, with the edges, so it may a little bit be curved. So you will always need to make a piece of straight metal that fits properly on the complete rim. And you place it in the middle, and then you put your... Um, laser to it. Now mine is kind of a magnetic one which is quite handy and there we go. So I would just mount that on there like this making sure that it really covers the rims that it's horizontal in the middle of the wheel hub and then I would just turn on my laser and then I have a laser beam going out that direction and I'm just gonna make some smoke you can see it and then you can measure the same things. And this is in essence the same as um, the rope we were putting up and then of course with the laser now, uh, you can do the same thing. You can actually measure out the distance. Um, this is like seven, seven. And on this side, it's also about seven, seven. So that works the same. But what I don't like about the laser light is that it actually, the dot is pretty reflective. Uh, this dot right here, the laser dot, and it's pretty big. So it's bigger than actually the, the string that I'm using. So I, I don't like to use the laser. So as soon as we've done the alignment, we need to tighten up this nut. And this is a counter nut, so just use two spanners and lock it into place. And once that is in place, then we need to secure the gator and we put a new tie wrap up. And that's all about there is to it. So now the next thing we're going to do is to lower the car and take a test spin with it and see what it does.
So now that we are finished with the adjustment of the toe in, we can take the car for a test spin and try to drive it in a straight line and feel what the car does. If it holds well the straight line, then your alignment is good. If it pulls to the right, then you probably have too much toe in on the left or not enough toe in on the right. If it pulls to the uh, left, then it's just the opposite. You have too much toe in on the right or maybe not enough uh, toe in on the left. This is something you need to feel and then correct the uh, according side uh, to make sure that the car is going in a straight line. Not very complicated, it's always the opposite side that you need to correct. So by this I'm going to finish up the video and I hope you enjoyed it and please by all means comment and thank you for viewing. Bye bye.